Hey guys, welcome back to Xenom Deluxe Gaming. Today I'm gonna be doing a review on Hollow Knight. This is my first review, and um, yeah, I'm not gonna be, I'm not trying to be IGN or anything, and I'm not probably gonna be that strict, but I'm just gonna do my honest thoughts of what I think on it. So, um, just make a new save for the recording of the video and, uh, Let's go. So, the basic plot is for the baby. The baby has been forgotten, so to get revenge, uh, she created an infection and cursed it upon the land. And now the king I thought he had a good idea. So, what he did was by um, creating a bunch of like vessels to trap, like, like that one over there and um, to trap the infection inside so it can't escape and it has to be what's known as a hollow knight so uh, it can't escape because it's super super hollow and to be hollow it has to have no feelings or anything so when they got the perfect hollow knight and trained it during the training the king and um, the vessel got kind of like a relationship which isn't very hollow therefore not hollow and now the infection is leaking out and we are playing as another vessel who still who even though it's been thrown away still has the mission to um stop the infection and trap it inside you even though it doesn't know the mission's over and it's everything's failed now so um yeah that's the basic plot so um let's get into the gameplay Hollow Knight feels very smooth and um, like the game just feels like nice, it just feels really nice just like, jumping around and all that stuff. But what makes the game truly good, which is probably the thing that makes um, it catch your eye, the art direction and like every everything here is completely drawn. It's not like modelled or anything, it, it, it's just drawn and everything and it took three years to make. They have some really good ideas in it. For example, the soul meter, the orb in the top left. When you hit something it goes up and up and you can hold the circle down, the circle button on the PS4 controller to um, use it to heal yourself when damage. Later in the game you can use it for other things like charging for blast attack or whatever and um and going back to that story idea it's just, it feels really nice watching the expand story grow because when you first see the game it doesn't actually tell you so i mean you can complete the entire game and not know what is going on so you can decipher it so the way the two ways you get it are by every once in a while you come across these orbs or get to a new section in the game you get a poem which um, is like really old and that kind of stuff really un not understandable but deciphering it tells you the story and some people can't do that so you have to talk to NPCs, complete missions and they tell you stuff all that kind of thing um, so this tutorial area here, um, it kind of merges it so you can't really tell it's a tutorial, like people just think it's the first section in the game even though it's actually just a tutorial and, it, and it's got a really nice big map that um, should keep you exploring for a while and you come back to certain areas and stuff so um we're gonna get to the main area now after this and i'm just gonna go through some of the bad things about the game because everything has its bad things so to advance in the game there's no specific route you just need to explore and you know you're on the right track when you're in an area which isn't too hard and you have the correct abilities to do it and all that stuff 
you can pretty goodly yeah. get through it. That that's when you're in the right area where you should be. Now you can save here and then you're oh. off to explore and every once in a while it's a really good feeling when you get to an area and you've got a new area but to get to an area like those benches up there are like check the game and when you get to a new area um it's usually really far away from the checkpoint so you have to go deeper like way too far into it to get to the next checkpoint so when you die you go all the way back to the checkpoint you can get all the coins back that you got of geo by defeating your ghost that it leaves behind but the ghost makes it harder like when you die in a boss fight you go back you have to fight the boss fight and your ghost the ghost is pretty easy to defeat, but in quick precision boss fights, um, we have to have like quick moves. That the ghost is just in the way. It's really hard. Luckily, in some areas, if you, even if you get killed inside the arena, you s the ghost still spawns outside the arena, so you can defeat it before you go in. They can still deal damage for the boss fight making you weaker. Oh, done chat So this is the map guy here. It's Choco, like this. Oh, no tonda. Choco, like this. One of the things I love about it is mm -hmm. how OP you can get, because in this, at the beginning, you can just move, jump, and attack. But if, when you go through your epic journey, you unlock more moves. It's not like it is a Metroidvania game, which is a mix of Castlevania and Metroid. Um, it's not it's not a Metroidvania game, but it is I, it is it is a Metroidvania game, just you can ignore it. Like one of the things I do hate is like I love getting OP in these kind of games. But then there's those games which I like. Oh, buy this, get stronger, equip spells, and you got a limited amount of spells you can get, but it takes up more spells. That that complex stuff. That complex. I um, don't that one. Um, but you can ignore it, and you can get a, a stronger by unlocking your abilities just by going through the game. And there's only a few abilities that you need to get, which aren't ones that you get from the story. Just find them and um, where where I am now in the game. Like I don't think it is. Now. Game because it's a very long game. Bit where there's loads of like it's in like I forgot what it's called. But there's loads of like spell magic guys and um, they're really hard because they're like boss level. But you have to defeat multiple of them. And you can defeat them one by one. They can't go to another room. But there's a really annoying thing where they're three and ones, which I get stuck at. And they're in different areas, so you can fight one and then fight the other, etc. Did, did I save? I'm gonna just go back and check save. Now for fight another, it gets it's hard. It's definitely really hard. Anyway, the thing that bugs me the most when I play the game was probably the coin geo system. Basically, when you get an enemy. You get coins, and um, you can spend the coins to get map upgrades and stuff. But they're really expensive. So um, one of the things I hate the game is like repetitiveness. I love it when it's like go to this new area, like go to this area, and then this area. But it's like grinding when you have to do the same thing over and over again. So basically in a story that starts out good it's like then you need to complete this mission and then you need to complete this mission it would be fine if it was added in one story but you're just completing the mission which is an excuse to extend the story in this this does not happen with the story that happens with 
the money. So in order to make stuff and life easier in the game, you have to get Geo, but you have to do Geo over and over again. It's not that like quick breeze and you can lose everything. There is a bank system but where you can store it and go pick it up when um, it's time, but that it can get real expensive, but I'm saying too many bad things about it right now. It has the even it has probably the most aftermath in an offline game I have ever seen. And it's not just like the aftermath isn't just like stupid Oh look get these new collectibles. It is completely new lore and story that you can go get. And DLCs are have become free now. Um the, yeah. The DLCs are free now so you won't really have to buy or purchase any big new content. And the DLCs add new things, new mechanics. It's amazing. And to show how big well, I can't do it right now because this is my entire map. But this guy can travel you around. It's so big, you need this guy to travel you around to new areas and stuff. Now I'm going to end the video off by completing the first segment of the game. First segment of the game by completing beating the first boss like there's I mean there isn't a f really a first boss there's another boss you can go do but the first boss that is required to at least encounter on a speed run you can skip it but you kind of do need to beat it to get a certain item which you need to do the city like the game rewards you for putting that more effort in they can be game, beat the game without doing effort, but it's harder if you don't do effort. And it's not because you kill all these enemies, you can skip enemies. It's the essential things you do in the story. For example, you get a better ending if you listen to the character Hornet and go all the way back to um, another area in the game. Or one of the best examples that I've recently found is after if you can skip this guy by breaking the wall down, but if you fight him you get the king's seal which can get you to the city straight away and quickly, and if you don't you have to go all the way back. I think there might be another way to get in, but it requires an ability which is really hard to get, but you can still get that ability. If you get into the city there's a power up you can get, which um makes that getting that another ability easier and um yeah so let's beat this guy the game isn't the boss fights in the game um i i actually think that the mini bosses are harder than the bosses right now. probably because these kind of bosses where you have to wait for their vulnerable moment are the kind of are kind of easier than the mini bosses and you can hit them any time they can hit you any but they don't have any vulnerable moment and yeah it's so like basically it's my two best games in history ever made i think are this game and like they're different they're in different ways this game and undertale probably the story the undertale it's better in like base story and it has got a little bit of this focuses on complex lore and stuff that Undertale focuses on just normal good story that anyone can enjoy doesn't mean you don't enjoy the game and like Undertale there's that sense of choice because there's five different endings well I say five there's loads of different endings just so or some of the endings are the exact same ending as the thing. It's a little bit different, but overall there's five types of endings, I would say. And if it's more deal, it's each ending is harder than the other, extended, blah blah blah. So we're just going to continue watching this go. Such a 
suddenly remember that I'm just gonna have to Try to use the mask ability. God. You get so used to getting more of your ability, you think you have to really run. I was trying to do ability. When I first was well, doing this, I was trying to do not playing this game from the beginning of the video, I was trying to do something new for me to do. Break the wall there. Like you see, I can break the wall right there. Yeah, I could leave. I need to get more rewards. Make the game easier. I did two Hollow Knight videos. Didn't make so much progress, but I've gone way further since then. Oh no. behind him. He's just like the first boss, like he's done. One of the things he fights something, he thinks he's like the worst or whatever. But then later in the game, um, he, get, he, he advances on the things you've done in the past and you're like, oh I never do that. It makes you have to do it again now that you understand and that's a lot, that's a lot of money. So um, yeah, out of, out of everything. I know this is sound like IGN y, um, but I'm gonna give it a 10 and I I am not being strict, a bit strict whatsoever. I'm trying to, but I just love the game so much. It's not my favorite. The reason why I'm making it a 10 is because it's not my favorite game, but I do think it's the best game. One of the best games ever. So, um, yeah, that's Hollow Knight. Ten.